Hi guys, Mike Eccles here again to talk about pen testing. Well, in the first video, we talked about the difference in the external pen tester or testing and the internal pen testing or tester. And this time we want to talk about the pen testing framework phases. There are four phases, the planning phase, the discovery phase, the attack phase, and the reporting phase. So a tester doesn't conduct a single test rather they have to work with the client to understand some facts before they begin. They create a feedback loop where newfound information allows them to dev into deeper into the system and to communicate continuously with their representative, right? So in this planning phase, um, it's a pre-phase to the penetration testing. During the initial stages, the pen tester will meet with the organization, outline the specifics of the testing. This includes expectations, objectives, goals, and legal implications. Um, the tester seeks to gain a deeper understanding of the risks, the culture of the organization, and after rules have been identified, the organization gets management's approval with documentation. Okay, so the second phase is the discovery phase. The discovery phase can actually be broken into two separate parts. One is the testing and the other is the vulnerability analysis. So the tester begins the initial process of testing, which is intended to gather information and scan systems. Depending on the attacker, there are several different techniques that can be used to gather crucial details. They include network port and service identification and also port scanning. This will help identify all of the ports across the system, services uh, that are being used on the system at that time and applications running on each identified service. Also host names, IP address information, uh, testers can perform DNS queries, network sniffing and internet queries to discover host names and IP addresses. Uh, and in terms of finding system information, although there's usually limited uh, it limits in the internal testing, Network information systems and NetBIOS enumerations can be leveraged to find this information. Sometimes it's as simple as finding information on employees, contact information, uh, where servers are located, or that small piece of information that is going to allow that hacker to exploit one of the employees. Okay? Um, the vulnerability part of this second phase, uh, the during this stage, the tester will gather services, applications, OS of scan hosts. They will then compare those categories against network databases and the tester's own knowledge. This can be done using either digital or man manual processes. The manual processes uh, work well, they're slower, but with the automatic processes, you may miss some things. So, phase number Three is the attack phase. Uh, as the NIST phrases, it's the execution of the attack and the heart of the penetration testing. Typically, attack phase follows four steps, which is then repeated if successful. One is gaining access, right? The second one is escalating privileges, right? The ability to get in and escalate privileges. Third is system browsing. Can you move laterally? Can you move across the network, up and down the network? And then the most important, and this is the one that most people are aware of because of malware, the ability to install additional tools, okay? So after step four takes place, you can leverage the new information to return to step one to begin the process anew, which each successive attack, the tester is able to gather more information about the systems and network. This in turn allows them to exploit newly discovered vulnerabilities and gain even further access. And this is why documentation is so important. So common vulnerabilities include misconfiguration. Uh, misconfigured security settings are 
uh, partially insecure default settings. Uh, kernel flaws. The kernel code, which is a central aspect of the OS, uh, is in charge of executing the total security model. Uh, buffer overflows. If programs don't properly address input uh, for the right length, arbitrary code with administrative level privileges may enter the system. And then insufficient input validation. When applications fail to validate the inputs they receive from users, it allows SQL injection attacks. This is a very common attack on systems. And then symbolic links, also known as symbol, symbol link. Um, the sim links could be exploited to compromise system files. And lastly, uh, race conditions. If a program is in privilege mode, a user can carefully time the attack using the escalated privileges as a threat vector or an entryway. All right, so the last phase, which is the reporting phase, remember we have discovery phase, we have, well, first we begin with the planning phase, then we have the discovery phase, then we have the attack phase, and then lastly, we have the reporting phase. Although it is technically last in order, you are doing reporting the whole time that you are working with a client. The reporting phase should occur throughout the other three phases of the pen test. This is usually maintained via written logs, periodic reporting, screenshots, and once the test is finished, the testing team will prepare a comprehensive report that includes known vulnerabilities, uh, present risk ratings, uh, remediation guidance. And then in six months to a year, you want to go back and you want to do the same test again to see if the organization has closed some of these vulnerabilities or made their system more resilient. This is Mike Eccles, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me.